Okay, welcome to this first project on Lightroom 4 tutorials, uh, retouching tutorials. So we're going to start off with this one photo, uh, Sunset taken in Paris. Now before we get started, I just want to show you how you move from the Lightroom 3 develop module to the Lightroom 4. Meaning, let's say that you have a photo that you, you, you own Lightroom 3 and you have upgraded to Lightroom 4 and you have already done some stuff on Lightroom 3, you will see that uh, the develop settings is like exposure, recovery, fill lights, blacks, which is not the same settings for the new Lightroom 4. But you get this exclamation mark here. When you press on it, it says new processing technology is available for this image, blah, 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 update. When you do that, the settings change and there are completely new ways of developing your photos on, uh, on Lightroom and they are very powerful ways. We're going to spend a bit of time on this uh, first video going over the, um, you know, the new settings because they are very, very powerful. Before we start, I just want to talk a little bit about the philosophy of these new settings. The philosophy is the following. Here you have what we call the histogram of the photo. What this is basically is you've got different uh, area. You see when I move my mouse here, it says black, here it says shadows, here it says exposure, here it says highlights, and here it says whites. What the histogram is, is basically going from the dark uh, pixels to the very light pixels. Um, basically what Lightroom does is that uh, it calculates how many, for example, completely 100% black pixels you have. Let's say you have like 1000 and it puts a little graph on it. And um, basically uh, this shows you the quantity of very dark pixels. This shows you the quantity here in this area of a bit uh, lighter pixels, etc., etc. In a nutshell, when your histogram is completely on the left, which is a bit the case here, it means that the photo is underexposed. And actually, uh, when you click on this little icon here, you can see in blue uh, all the pixels which are completely uh, black dark. There is no information than just pure black. Now, that's not good because that means there is no details. But it does not mean that these pixels are lost forever because as we are going to go into the settings here, we're going to recover some hidden information. Why? Because all these photos, which you can download, by the way, are taken in a raw format. And raw format is a format that basically just takes the raw information of the sensor and puts them into one file without doing anything and just putting them there. There is no contrast, no saturation, no, uh, you know, making it darker or lighter or anything. It's just the raw information. And then it's up to you uh, to develop it. Uh, just like we used to do in a darkroom in, uh, in the old days, but using uh, a raw software. And Lightroom is a raw software, which is going to be unable to, you know, get all those hidden informations out of the raw file so that we have a proper exposure and we have a nice photo. And that's what we are going to be doing. So the first two uh, settings have not much changed since Lightroom 3. And it's basically uh, temperature and tint. What this is, is basically when you go to the right on temperature it's going to make your photo uh, a lot more warmer like yellow tones and when you make it to the left it's going to be like blue tones uh, you can either do it on the slider here or you can go here and uh, take you know for example daylight uh, it's going to change the settings uh, cloudy is going to change the temperature uh, shade you know if this photo was taken in shade uh, tungsten meaning there is, you know, like electric city lights uh, type of uh, lighting just for that photo, etc, etc. Now, I usually don't so much use these settings. I like to go on a sort of artistic crusade here and, you know, just do it by hand and use a slider to my taste. Uh, one thing which is important to mention is that whenever I retouch a photo, I always do it with the with the taste of the moment, meaning the way I'm going to do it now might be completely different from the way I'm going to be doing it tomorrow. You know, it's just the, the artistic feeling that I have right this second. So uh, let's set the temperature for this photo. I would go, uh, I want to, you know, the sun was really there. You know, I, I shot right into the sun on the tripod to make sure I have no uh, shake, you know, on the photo and it's completely clear. 
So I think I'm gonna go somewhere around this on the on the temperature, make it like really yellow, you know, like sun sunlight, sunbeams, you know, sunset, you know, here here I come, you know, type of photo. Uh, tint basically uh, is the same philosophy except that when you go left. Uh, the photo goes green and when you go right the photo goes a bit like magenta uh, purple now on this photo i'm just going to add a little bit of purple because there is a bit of purple on sunsets somewhere around here you know it's just a feeling you know you just go by your feelings basically next is exposure now exposure simple exposure is going to change the middle of the histogram basically if you if i go right it's going to brighten the whole photo and if i go left it's going to darken the whole photo now if you double click on the slider it puts it back to where it was usually on my photos especially with lightroom 4 i don't touch the exposure before the end uh, and also the contrast i don't touch the contrast before the end because these two sliders i usually use to fine tune my retouching uh, what contrast is is uh, I will bring it up a bit later, but basically contrast is contrast, meaning it's making anything which is dark, darker, anything which is white, whiter. And also in that process, it gives more saturation to the photo. But I recommend you to do this once you've, done, you've gone over these four settings, because this is where the magic is happening, is really on these four settings. Highlights, shadows, white and blacks. Now, how, the, how do they work? Highlights, basically, uh, if I look, if you look in here, it says uh, highlights is here. It's the white part of the histogram, meaning it's anything which is very uh, light in the photo. Now, I want to get more details in my sky. Now, look at this. If I bring, uh, one thing I did not mention is that all the sliders here are at zero. And basically, that this is something new in Lightroom 4. Uh, <clears throat> you see the, on the slider here, um, on the left it's dark and on the right it's 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 white or lighter or light gray meaning if you move a slider to the left you're going to darken the highlights and only the highlights and when you move the highlights to the right you're going to brighten just the highlights so for example i want to get look at this when i bring down the, the highlights when i darken the highlights it doesn't do anything to the shadows on the photo it's just looks what is very light in the photo and makes that a bit darker and this is something I do almost on every photo and it brings out really the power of the of the sky that was there for that night. Now on the other end, shadow is the opposite. Shadow is all these dark parts. There's a lot of shadows in this photo. So if I go right, it's going to open up. It's going to fill what we call in photography the shadows, meaning it's going to make the shadows brighter. So let's go something like this, you know. So now we got you know, the sky pretty much right, the shadows is okay, the whole photo is lacking a bit of contrast. I could treat that with this slider, but I'm not. I'm first gonna explain you whites and blacks. Now white, if you look at it on the histogram, is the very right part of the photo. It's completely like the very, very uh, light part on the photo. And, and there is a, a method that you can use on all your photos to put the whites and the blacks. And here it, how it goes. You go onto the Y slider and you press the Alt key. You click on the Y slider and the whole screen goes black. What that means is that there is no pixel in that photo which is 100% white. If I move a little bit to the right, you will see here. Uh, what happens is that I have brightened up the photo to a point where some pixels appears to be 100% white. And it's a good point. I, then I let draw the Alt key and uh, basically I have set up my whites. Now, if you think the photo is too bright, you can always back down a little bit, you know, just a little tiny bit. Uh, so we get some details back in the sun, but I don't really care that this is pure white because uh, I still think it creates an emotional impact. Um, then we have uh, blacks. Blacks is the same thing. You press Alt and you move to the left this time and the whole screen is white and you see when you start seeing some pixels like you can see in the right corner that means that this pixel are 100 percent black so what i usually do is that i go until i see yeah something like this a little bit of you know so a decent amount of pixel which are black then i let go and then i look at my photo and i say hmm is this too bright or is this too light if 
I find that it's a bit too dark. I can go a little bit to the right. Now, um, let's see if we can see a before and after. There is a very easy way on, uh, on um, Lightroom to see the before and after. Okay, to see the before and after, we can, uh, let me just take back the photo. This is, uh, we can just go here on the left and this is what I, we call the history. And uh, this is all the steps we have done. And uh, if I go back to, uh, to here, for example, uh, this is where we started, you know, and this is where we are. So quite a change just with this few settings. So now let's continue tweeting this photo. Um, I think the photo is pretty nice, but I think it lacks a bit of contrast. Now I have done the highlights, the shadows, the whites and the blacks. So now I'm going to move my contrast slider a bit to the right to make the shadows a bit darker and to make, and to make the, the whites a bit brighter. So now we are starting to get somewhere. Um, so this is the, the really the main things you're going to be dealing with. The next is, uh, which is interesting, is clarity. Now what clarity does, when you go on to the right, it's basically going to give like a sort of what I would call an HDR type of look, meaning that it's going to put contrast in the mid-tones, get, getting it more, uh, uh, you know, contrasty feeling, more crisp. Uh, now, I think on this photo, it's too much. If I go to like 100, you know, it's going to give like a very hdr -y look to it. I don't like that. If I go on the left, it's going to give a very soft feeling to it. I just, I just want to add a little bit of clarity, like maybe plus 16 or something, just to give a little snap to it. Not much. Vibrance and saturation. Now, these are interesting characters. What saturation is, uh, let me start by saturation. Saturation is... When you go on the right, it makes the color more vivid. Basically, when you go on the left, it makes the color more black and white. If I double click, it puts it back to zero. Now, Vibrance does the exact same thing with the one different. It's, it does it with a brain, with intelligence, meaning it tries to detect in the photo which colors are already very saturated and try to saturate the ones which are less saturated. So it gives a more natural result. Now, for me, this photo does not need more vibrance, but let's try it a little bit, like plus 47. You know, it makes it, okay. Uh, it's, it's more subtle than the saturation. It's kind of nice. I'm gonna back it down a little bit. Uh, yeah, like plus four. I don't think it needs much saturation. It's already much, pretty much saturated. Okay, now that's the basics uh, settings here. Uh, now, you can either tweak the settings or you can use uh, the curve here. Now, the curve has all four areas. It's the same concept than the one above. Some people like to use more the curve because they are used to the curve in Photoshop. But I must say, after using Lightroom for years, I always find that these settings, especially with Lightroom 4, are really the most powerful ones. But the way it works is basically the same concept. You've got shadows, dark lights, and, uh, and uh, highlights. Now, on this photo, I could... Um, Shadows is what's really dark. If I go to the left on the shadows, it's going to take anything which is really dark and make it darker too much. Darks is going to take which is not that much dark and darken that. So let's see what happens on that. Still way too much. Uh, could be interesting to actually go the other side to, to get yeah a little bit more less. Uh, it's going to take out some of the, of the contrast because it's going to light up a bit some of the shadows, but not a too dark shadows. Uh, lights, same concept. If I go left on the lights, it's going to take whatever in the photo is um, is not quite highlights, like is bright but not super bright, and we're going to darken that. I don't think that works well on on this. Maybe on the opposite could be nice. You know, you can give it a try. Oh, not so bad, actually, not so bad. Uh, and then the highlights is really what's really bright. Probably what's the sun. If I go this to the right, it's going to make the sun the sunny part uh, lighter. If I go to the left, it's gonna make the sunny part darker. Uh, I usually don't tweak so much with the curve. You know, I just did here a little bit, but for the, you know, for, for this tutorial, uh, I usually deal with this, especially using Lightroom 4. But this is just the first project. We've got like seven projects, so, you know, you will get to be used to it. Okay, next, and that's a very important one. Use saturation and luminance. Okay, uh, this already existed in Lightroom 3. Uh, if, 
if you've watched videos or if you know how to use Lightroom 3, there's not much change, but if you have never been to Lightroom and Lightroom 4 is your first experience, let me go over it real quick. Uh, you, what this is, is basically it's gonna change the color. Uh, you have individual colors here, red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, magenta. Uh, for example, if I go uh, with the red, I go to the left, it's gonna take anything which is red in the photo or close to the red and make it redder which is not so bad on this one, making this part a bit more redder. Um, if I go to the left, it's gonna make them more like a yellowish, greenish, you know. I prefer this way, you know, because sunsets are usually pretty red. Orange, it's an interesting one, especially for sunset. If I go to the right, it's gonna take anything which is orange and make it a lot more uh, gr uh, yellow, but with a bit of a green tint in it. If I go to the left, it's gonna take anything which is orange and make it more orange. Now on this one, it's too much. So I'm not gonna to touch this one. Yellows, if I go left, it's gonna take anything which is yellow and make it more yellow. If I go right, it's gonna make it like more greenish. Um, I don't think I'm gonna to touch this one. Uh, okay, that's the concept of you. It, it actually changes the color itself. Now, saturation is different. What saturation does is that it takes a color like red and makes it more red, like more vivid red or you know, it doesn't shift the color, it just takes the red and makes it more red, or makes it more black and white. Uh, orange, for example, if I go to, there's a lot of orange in this photo, I believe. So if I go right, look at this, the whole photo becomes a lot more orange. Now on all these settings, you have two ways to uh, change the slider. Either you do it here by dragging the sliders that we've done so far, or you have a little circle, which is here, and it's called uh, um, a target adjustment tool. When you click on it, you have a little new icon appearing and you can just go on a color. Let's see, let's say that I find that there is not enough colors in this. I click and if I drag up because I took the saturation one, it's gonna detect what color it, this is and it's gonna saturate everything. Look what it did. Basically it detected that where I clicked was orange and as I dragged my mouse up, it put more saturation on the orange. Now let's do it the opposite. I click on my mouse and I drag down and now as there's only orange, it, it basically backs down uh, the saturation, makes it more black and white, the orange. You can just double click to go back. So you can either use a slider or use this tool. Next, we have luminance. Now luminance is a different concept. It's a concept about not how vivid a color is, which is saturation, but how light or dark a color is. Let's take the reds, for example. Let's make the reds darker. Uh, it's going to take anything which is red and it's going to sort of add black to it. Now that could also in the same time add saturation. doesn't do much because not much red, but look on the orange. If I go here on the left, it's taking all the orange, which is very ugly for now, uh, and make it darker. On the other hand, if I go on the, other, uh, on the opposite, it's going to make anything which is orange, which is the main color of this photo, and it's going to make it brighter. I don't like that, so I'm going to double click on it. And same thing, you can use this tool to drag and drop, you know, uh, you, you just click up, it's gonna make the, uh, the the colors lighter, down, I'm, I'm still holding my left mouse button, it's gonna make the whole photo, uh, this color, where exactly where my mouse is, darker, which is basically the orange, because this photo is basically has two colors, the orange from the sky, and you know, the blacks from the rest of the photo, it doesn't have much more than that, really. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna put back my hue to where it was, you know, I think it's a bit too much. Okay, so that was a little brief on the U saturation and luminance. You will see in later projects, we will be using more of these settings. Split toning, I'm not gonna go over for now. And uh, details, now this is an important one. Details, sharpening and noise reduction. Now, most of the photo you will see today are photo which are a bit underexposed. Why is that? It's because I expose for the highlights. What does that mean is that I know that Lightroom is very powerful on getting details out of the shadows, but it's actually less powerful on getting details out of very uh, bright pixels because often, they, 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 especially the sky has tendency to burn, meaning that you have like no details left. So I underexpose my photo so that I can, you know, brighten up the shadows and get a, you know, the, a good amount of sky back, but still be able to get some of the shadows back. Problem is, when I do that, look at this. On the shadows, I have noise. Now, Lightroom is a champion of the world of noise reduction, especially since Lightroom 3 and Lightroom 
before has not changed the tradition. So how does noise reduction work? Basically, there's only two sliders you really need to know. One is called luminance and one is called color. Luminance basically is this little grains that you see here. If I go to the right, it's going to take out these grains. Look at this. I put it back to the left. Look all these grains and I put it to the right. They're all gone. So that's very, very powerful and very needed for that photo. Now, if you look here on the dark side, you will see there's a lot of like sort of greenish, reddish type of spots. Now, that is what we call color noise. And that's taken out with this lighter. And I usually go way, way, way strong. Look at this, how it took out. I put it down to zero. You will see there's a lot of greens. Oh, look at this red, red grain, you know. And if I go to the right, the whole way to the right, all this grain is taken out. So now that I've taken out the noise, I need to sharpen a bit the photo because uh, what happens is that, um, you know, you blur a little bit your photo when you take out the noise. So I usually, as a rule of thumb, put the sharpening around about 80 or not more than 80, like 70 or 80, just to give back a bit of sharpening in it. Okay, so now we are done with this. Now, one thing you should know is that sometimes if you have a lot of noise and you go back by clicking on your photo to 100% like to a, a full screen mode view, uh, the noise might seem to come back. And that's because uh, Lightroom only really takes out the noise when you process the photo out of Lightroom, like you go to Photoshop or you post it on the web. And there you can go 100% the noise is gone. So just so you know, once you've done the noise reaction, the noise, even if you can see some of it there, which actually don't see much on this photo, you know it's gone. Like if I click on it, uh, no more noise. Okay, so we've taken out the noise, we've done the exposure. Uh, what else can we do? Okay, lens correction, interesting one. When you click, uh, I always suggest that you click enable profile correction, uh, which I just did here. Now, what that does is that it detects that this photo was taken with a 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 lens, which is a Canon, a very nice lens. And it tries to correct the, the known problem with that lens. So I usually go and just click the uh, enable profile correction. And one thing I do is remove chromatic aberration. Now, what is chromatic aberration? I don't think there is much in this photo. Is sometimes uh, around the borders here on the photo, you can have a little green or reddish sort of like line um, actually don't have any on this photo but in any case I always click the remove chromatic aberration it's not going to do nothing on this photo but in case there is one which I have not seen it's gone it's killed wow okay so that's for lens correction there is a manual setting but we'll do this in a later video okay uh, last not last but Camera calibration, before we go into the post crop vignetting here effect, which we will go over. Camera calibration basically is different methods of interpreting your raw files. Now, I always do the camera calibration after I have done my retouching. The reason why, as I underexpose my photos, uh, they usually don't have much color, much you know, correct uh, lightning. So it's kind of hard to tell what it's gonna look like with the camera calibration. So what this does is like it, det it detects like if you have a Nikon and, uh, or a uh, Canon, you will get different settings. But so it starts off, for example, with Adobe Standard. You just go through, you just click, for example, Camera Faithful, and it's going to change the way the pixels are interpreted. Um, kind of, I don't like that one. Let's go for Landscape, see what Landscape does. A landscape makes the whole photo more to the red. Don't like it on this one. Camera Neutral is probably going to make yeah, everything uh, neutral, like less vivid colors uh, camera portrait yeah puts it to the pink side uh, sorry and uh, camera standard well makes it a bit similar than adobe standard but i think adobe standard the one we were on is the one i like the most for that photo yeah or actually it's not so maybe go back to camera standard not so bad it makes it a bit more vivid more impact on the photo okay so yeah you can just go it doesn't change much to be honest but you, on some landscape photography, it's worth checking the camera landscape calibration because sometimes it gives a nice color shift. Alrighty, so now, uh, post-crop vignetting. What that is, is creating a vignetting. What is vignetting is making the corners of the photo darker. Now, 
check this out. If I go to the left, it's going to make, uh, not that much, like let's go minus 16, it's going to make the corner of the photo a bit darker. And what that does is that it attracts the attention of the viewer in the center of the photo even more because the fact the eyes is drawn to light parts in a photo. So the fact of putting a little bit of vignetting gives a more interesting look sometimes. I think it works kind of fine on this photo. Maybe I'm going to back it down a little bit. Okay, so at this point, I could be say that I'm finished. Now, I want to go a bit further on this one and show you uh, what I call the local retouching. So for this, we're going to go into, and that's a completely uh, uh, revamped uh, feature in Lightroom 4, uh, the brush. When you click on the brush, you've got a lot more settings here that we had in Lightroom 3. So first, let me click on Alt. When you click on Alt, the effect button becomes reset. I click on reset. So now all the sliders are down to zero. Okay, now the way this works is that you have a brush. Okay, and when if I brush now, nothing's going to happen because all these settings are down to zero. So first, let's go over the brush size. If you have a middle mouse button and you move it, it's going to change your brush size, which is something that I use all the time. A lot easier than going to the size slider, which is here. Okay, now feather and flow. Feather is, I always put it to 100% because what feather is, you see on the brush, let me show you here. You've got two circles. Basically, the inner circle to the outer circle is the part which is feathered, meaning it's, it's a smooth transaction. If I take feather uh, down to zero and, for example, add some exposure and I brush on my photo, look at this. It makes a very, very definite and clear um, uh, line, which is looks awful. So let me just select this and click the, press delete to take it out. Now, if I do the same thing, but with the feather at 100%, look at this. It's already a lot more realistic because it's feathered. It's, it's smoothed out, but still too strong. I'm still gonna delete it by pressing delete. Okay, flow is how much, you know, if I put the flow at half and I do the same line, basically it's gonna put a lot more light into it. To be honest, I don't. I always put flow at 100%, and I use the uh, the exposure slider as my um, uh, amount of quantity that I want to put in the brush. So I always put feather and flow to 100%. Now auto mask, that's a very interesting one, and it's to be used very carefully, and we will go over that into a later video. But for now, all I want is to uh, add a little bit of exposure, okay, and um, I want to brush the, the white parts of the ships to make them just pop out a little bit, you know, where there is the names and stuff like that, to make them a bit more, um, a, a, bit, a bit lighter. Now, one thing which is lovely with Lightroom is that it's totally non-destructive, meaning that, okay, if I find this to be too bright, I can just back down my exposure and it just backs down the exposure on where I've brushed. If I want to go the whole way, I can go right and it makes it super bright. Uh, I want to, you know, add a bit of light, but you know, just just a little bit, you know. Um, let's maybe add a little bit of lights. Uh, let's create a new brush by clicking new, keeping the exposure at this, at the same rate, uh, zero uh, comma fifty two. I just want to add a bit of light. Uh, here on the um, on the river to make the reflection of the river even a bit stronger. Okay, now why did I create a new brush? Because um, I find that this is too bright, and if I back down here, it's only going to back down the lights I've painted on that brush, which you can see here. Uh, you see, when I put my mouse over this little pin, it shows me where I have a brush just for that, for, for that brush stroke. And this settings is only gonna deal with that brush stroke. If I go on this other pin here, uh, it shows me the brush stroke just for that pin. If I wanna change uh, the, uh, the exposure of that brush pin, I just click on the pin and for example, make it brighter again. Okay, that's too much. Back. Okay, now I can go select my second pin and uh, 
and make it brighter or make it uh, less brighter you see so it's like layers in Photoshop if you know a bit Photoshop you know uh, but it works with pins so that's a good one I just wanted to add a bit of, uh, of light here so I usually do a lot of brush on my photo to give it more contrast more interesting lights I think it's still too much I just wanted to add a little bit of more re reflection yeah something like that if you want to see before and after just the brush strokes you can click here before and after I think it makes the photo a slightly bit more interesting so uh, yeah basically uh, that's that um, that is that and I'm pretty much finished with this photo so let's go back in the history and I'll show you where we started uh, we started uh, here and this is where we have come we've done all this and we are here now so uh, quite a change I mean it went from a sort of so so unusable photo to something a bit more uh, live and vibrant and dramatic you know so that was our first uh, photo retouching and uh, first project let's uh, see you in the next video for another project